once an equipment or system is built and installed on a site, the next step is the qualification phase. This phase consists of three parts. Installation qualification, IQ, operational qualification, OQ, and performance qualification, PQ. Compliance to all three phases improves the overall knowledge of the equipment, process or system and assures that the process has been well developed, well maintained and operates as it should. It reduces the risks involved and expenses of routine processes. Let's discuss it one by one. Remember that all activities need to be well documented. Remember, if it is not written, it does not exist. The installation qualification includes the verifications of the correct installation of equipment, systems, instruments and components. Some verifications are needed in this phase. For example, perform a visual inspection of the packaging when it is received. Perform a visual inspection of the system after the unpackaging to detect any damage. You also need to verify the installation according to the specifications and drawings and against specific acceptance criteria. Check that the technical environment, for example, the safety, environmental conditions, installation site, is in agreement with the system or equipment to be installed. You should collect all the documentation supplied by the vendor, like the instructions and maintenance requirements. Collect and check the certification of verification of the materials of construction from the supplier. And last but not least, check there are calibration certificates for instruments and sensors that ensure they have been verified and calibrated. The operational qualification is executed after performing the installation qualification. The OQ consists of testing the system process and equipment to ensure it is operating as expected as defined by the design made by the supplier. The specifications are used to check that the features are in compliance within the whole specifications acceptance criteria. So, it is usual to test at the upper and lower limits. This is a worst case approach. For example, in the case of a climatic chamber used to perform the stability studies, you could perform a temperature mapping in empty conditions and real conditions. Another test should be to carry out trials that include the upper and lower operating limits of temperature and humidity. Another important test is to check the effectiveness of alarms, controllers or recording systems. And finally, you should carry out a simulation test of startup and shutdown systems. It may happen that the climatic chamber works differently if it is empty or full. So, performing tests at both conditions should be beneficial and would require the presence of the product. In this case, you could use a placebo. Once the OQ tests are executed, this phase can be completed with the preparation of SOPs and cleaning procedures. Training sessions should be done to personnel for use and maintenance of the system or equipment. It is good practice to write an intermediate IQ report. Once the installation and operational qualification have been approved, the performance qualification is then carried out under actual operating conditions and with the same products or materials or a placebo with the same or equivalent characteristics of the product. The tests in the PQ should cover the operating range of the intended process. In the example of the climatic chamber, the verification steps of the PQ can be compared to the results obtained during the OQ tests. The specifications could include the acceptance criteria for temperature homogeneity over a defined period of time. The maximum temperature variation would also give information about temperature stability. Other possible tests could be the comparison of the temperature set point of the chamber with the real temperature. And finally, the recovery time for the temperature at different temperature set points in the chamber to return to the established regime after a disturbance. It is also good practice to write an intermediate PQ report. 
The validation report is a document that summarizes the results that have been collected in the previous phases, the IQ, OQ and PQ. A conclusion section is also expected. Results are compared with the established acceptance criteria defined previously in each phase. If results are not complying with the acceptance criteria, a deviation should be recorded and an in-depth investigation should be performed. Changes to acceptance criteria cannot be done unless they are justified scientifically. No open issues should be left when the final validation report is completed. If open issues still remain to be completed and closed, an assessment should be done. It is not usual to use a system or equipment with open issues. Otherwise, CAPAS should be implemented and followed upon during system use. We also recommend preparing a traceability matrix as a summary of the qualification process. A traceability matrix is a document that maps and traces the URS with the test cases. The main purpose is to validate that all requirements are checked via test cases such that no functionality is unchecked. The traceability matrix should be prepared once the URS and functional specifications are completed. This is a live-in document that is completed throughout the qualification cycle. Thank you for attending this course. I hope you find it useful and that you have learned what you expected. See you in other courses at SciLife Academy to continue your learning journey.